Okay. And uh, one more thing, uh, Akash. Uh, we currently now one uh, person will join. His name is Rakesh. He is my team member. So you just uh, make him the host, okay? Make him okay, the host. Co-host, co-host. You also be there in the meeting, Akash. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you, Akash. Rakesh sir, you are the host right now. Yes, sir. Recording started. Sir, already started. Yeah, yeah, yes, recording started. So, okay. should I stay in the meeting or leave the meeting? No, you will leave, sir. I can end up. Okay, sir. Thank. Thank you, sir. Hello, Rakesh. You can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened with the original link? Yes, sir. What happened with the original meeting? Our original meeting. Sir, I have sent original link to Dr. Gaurav Shah, sir. sir. Oh, this I have joined with a new link, na? Usually. Yes, sir. Uh, the new link which is your what sir you have to join for that link only no no i have joined this by another id meeting id is different sir has just shared it on the group so i have joined it by that id yes sir matlab uski link se aapko join karna jo gaurav sir ne bheja hai ha jo bhi recent bheja hai jo pehle hum log usual jo link rehta hai usse nahi chalu hua उससे नहीं हुआ सर उसमें वो लिंक में प्रॉब्लम आ गया था थोड़ा टेक्निकल इश्यू था तो मैं गौरव सर से बात करके मैंने दूसरा लिंक क्रिएट करके तुरंत भेजा है ओके ओके थोड़ा टाइम लेकर ज्वाइन करेंगे कोई बात नहीं ओके सर आपको भेज दूं मैं पर्सनली नहीं नहीं आ गया मेरे पास मैं उसी से लॉगिन किया हूं ओके यस सर Good evening, Jayendra sir. Good evening, good evening, sir. Good evening. Nice to have you here. Yes. 
so today the full burden is on you only are nahi sir last time uh, i missed out i was held up in the hospital with some emergency it was you know i also missed out and uh, i could not inform you earlier otherwise it would have been a very great uh, you know class now only thing is i think this is the second last so if you have something very good uh, you let me know so then last class we will keep it the last for uh, pediatric urology which uh, can i will keep some cases you? of puj puj le lete hain okay yeah. or you can do one thing you can have a two three puj or two three like uh, uh, puj yeah puj hai uh, ectopic ureters hai ha nahi everything so now what you can do is like you have got like four five six different cases in pediatric and we can have three or four students answering and you can just ask one after them okay okay you know what you will do or what is the diagnosis or what are the investigation yes. in that and uh, like you know you can have all different scenarios sure, so sure. You... just a second sir ek call hai mujhe yeah. hello सर ये नेक्स्ट कब ले रहे हैं ट्यूसडे या सैटरडे नेक्स्ट ट्यूसडे ट्यूसडे ओके दैट मींस आई एम थिंकिंग बिकॉज़ नाउ ओनली टू मंथ्स आर लेफ्ट एंड द स्टूडेंट्स आर लिटिल एप्रिहेंसिव सो दे विल आल्सो लाइक टू स्टडी यू नो सो व्हाट वी कैन डू इज वी कैन हैव द लास्ट वी फिनिश विद योर प्रेजेंटेशन और योर क्लिनिक यस यू नो that is the way we can do yes the last moment they could not uh, you know they had some problem in link so we okay. have to change so we'll just wait for 5 7 minutes sure sure sir Yeah, Anki sir, who will be answering today? Achin, who is going to answer today? We have to confirm from Tanvi sir. Pardon? Uh, sir, yes. We have to confirm sir. Uh, sir, Doctor Ojay sir, Gokila Gan Hospital sir. Ambre Gangke and Ojay sir also. Doctor Ojay and Doctor Ambre Gangke. मृगांकली no problem no problem we just for 5 minutes and then we start okay, okay. sir no yes sir
Sorry.
Yeah, Dr. Sharma. Yes, yeah, sir. I think we should start now. I think so, sir. Yeah. Otherwise, it so, will get yeah, delayed. So today, na, uh, there are two students who are answering. One is Ojas, yes. and second is um, Riganka. So these two are answering, and uh, uh, Achint is going to present a case. Mm -hmm. Fine, Achint, you can start. Yes, sir. Sir, a school-going boy, eight years of age, a resident of Mumbai. Complaints of straining while passing urine since two months associated with incomplete voiding and burning maturation. Yeah, fine. So, Mriganka. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is a history. So, in an eight years old boy, uh, what are the questions you want to ask? Sir, along, uh, he has a complaint of straining while passing the urine since two months, sir, with incomplete voiding and burning maturation. So we will ask about uh, what is the color of the urine, uh, whether he is uh, having difficulty while passing urine, whether he is crying, whether there is any abnormal uh, uh, foul smelling urine. Uh, so along with it, uh, whether he, there is hematuria, there is any, uh, then there is any history of. Uh, nocturia. Ojas, can you just tell us? Uh, sir, I would like to ask, as you mentioned, apart from that, uh, other symptoms I would like to ask is uh, whether uh, uh, about the, uh, so mainly about the urination, how, how much urine does it passes, whether he has achieved uh, whether, uh, continence, whether uh, uh, about uh, any history of fever, uh, and uh, about his bowel, uh, uh, bowel habits as well. Uh, yes, and Mrigang, uh, before you go ahead, uh, can I interrupt? See, what yes, happens is that you are aware that this particular session is on pew wall. So now yes, your sir. entire thought process is now um, dominated by that particular thing. Do, get that pew wall thing out of your mind. A patient who presents, an eight-year-old boy who understands what is voiding, what is defecation, and he has presented with straining sense of incomplete void and burning maturation. Forget that he may be having pu walls, forget that he may be having anything else. You ask, uh, you know, you, you imagine yourself sitting in an OPD and asking the patient what else. Don't try to fit things because now your thought process is governed by the diagnosis that probably you are uh, anticipating. Yes, sir. So we, we can are, ask. We are talking in terms of straining. You ask. See, there are three symptoms that have been mentioned: straining, incomplete void, and burning maturation. Yes. So you ask yes, in detail about burning maturation. You are right when you say that you have asked about hematuria. Then you also ask about other symptoms: frequency, urgency, yes. uh, poor stream, uh, intermittency is of course mentioned. Then you also mentioned uh, ask about nocturnal enuriasis. Then you come to fever, pain in abdomen. Does it tend to pull at his prepuce? Is there ballooning of prepuce? Yes. See, he may be a simple case of UTI with phimosis. He may be having first episode of UTI because of phimosis at this age. So yes. the case which will come in an exam will be a case which is coming. You are not knowing the diagnosis. Even if the experts tell you, don't get biased by it and ask the history as you ask for last two and a half, three years you have been asking in your OPD. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, Doctor Sharma is absolutely right. He is eight years old boy who is going to answer you. So, like any ad adult, you must ask about bloods. So, you ask about the voiding uh, symptoms and ask about the uh, storage symptoms. So, that is the most important thing. So, that will first cover your difficulty in passing urine. Correct. Yes, yes sir. Second will be anything whatever the differential diagnosis that comes into your mind so eight years old boy has all this problem so what are the differential diagnosis that comes to your mind sir uh, sir differential would include uh, meatal stenosis phimosis sir obviously the posterior ureteral valve anterior ureteral valve vesico ureteric reflex neurogenic bladder and, and sorry to say if you are thinking in these terms, I think it's it's again guided by the fact that this is a class on pu walls. 
see the first thing that should come the history is of only two months why should you walls come to your mind eight eight year old boy having complaints of straining only since two months yes sir then the next if you say ki you are thinking in terms of anti urethral walls you are talking of a rare diagnosis initially the stricture stricture again how common do you think stricture is in there in a 8 year old boy it is it is it's not that it's uncommon you do come across but it's not a first diagnosis that you would make so could could be stone as well sir. yes that would be the first thing according to me yes stone pyomosis meatosinosis and also some pelvic mass are compressing the bladder resulting in lots and strain uh, outlet obstruction see these the, are these are, these are very uh, in a remote possibilities you talk of the commonest is first you yes. will start with stone so the commonest in this age will be you must talk about a stone second thing is uh, as he said either pyomosis metal stenosis maybe a neurogenic bladder and then these are the two red that is uh, at this age posterior ureter valves and that also can see. be possible in the anterior ureter picture yes okay right. so depending on that now you are going to ask associated question uh, negative history and that also you will also ask about the uh, problem secondary problem to that so the complication yes. leading to ckd ckd okay? yes sir yes sir So that is the way it should go. Fine. Yes. I think yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Patient was apparently normal two months back when he started straining during menstruation, associated with incomplete wording, hesitancy, and burning sensation. There is no history of any increased frequency, urgency, nocturia, nocturnal enuresis or dribbling of urine. No history of any intermittency of poor flow of urine. Uh, and other negative issues include no issue of any fever, hematuria, difficulty in passing stool or walking, swelling in the back, difficulty in detecting fetus, over penis, ballooning of skin while passing urine, uh, no issue of any similar complaints in past, no issue of swelling over the limbs, swelling over the face or dyspnea while playing, no issue of any previous episode of acute retention of urine or crying while passing urine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so anything else you want to ask sir uh, we would like to know about the antenatal history also or uh, any history of catheterization any uh, since uh, what had a whether the birth was normal or cesarean section whether any uh, hospitalization was there previously thank a simple way would be ask is there But, any significant medical history in the medical. past that's it that's yes it. any history of catheterization and so procedure okay fine and let's that child is admitted he won't be catheterized so any significant medical history any history of allergies or any history of admission for any reason if yes, that sir. is not there that's fine okay achin go ahead uh, past history no history of any other comorbidities no history of any previous surgery Birth history: normal delivery, 2.8 kg with no antenatal abnormal scans. Uh, patient himself is the eldest child with one younger brother. Family history: nothing contributory. No urological complaints in the sibling. Diet is mixed. Appetite is adequate. Bowel is regular. Bladder is altered. And sleep is understood. So, Mriganka, what is the importance of the family history? And what is the importance of uh, birth history of antenatal or postnatal? Sir, uh, in a family history, uh, uh, whether any similar history to uh, with uh, re with relation to sibling, whether there was any and uh, history of consanguine venous marriages, or and uh, antenatal, we would like to know whether whether uh, the any complications during the pregnancy entire uh, pregnancy was normal or was it uh, some difficulty was there like what like sir in uh, for example uh, pre premature delivery uh, iugr and uh, sir uh, oligohydramnios also can be there uh, how will that cause difficulty in delivery sir how will that cause difficulty in delivery so uh, that could lead to premature uh, 
premature delivery or how would right. that cause straining at the age of 2 8 years what is important which history is important so uh, so in family history uh, as your first your first difference would be stone diseases again so any uh, history of uh, genetic uh, stone diseases like you could have renal tubular acidosis or uh, related to calcium and phosphate metabolism those uh, those could predispose to stone disease so that the history would like to ask as in the family history uh, in the birth history uh, uh, mainly the anti uh, the antenatal and the perinatal period uh, uh, whether there is whether uh, any uh, significant antenatal history regarding to oligo or polyhydramnios and in the perinatal period whether there is history of any catheterization or any any kind of uh, uh, any um, intervention in the perinatal period sir just uh, what i would suggest is ki if it is a short case and somebody ask you ki what is the significance of family history the first answer which i would give would be uh, i would ask whether his siblings uh, had any antenatal uh, or prenatally detected hydronephrosis that is far more common than renal tubular acidosis because the moment you utter the word renal tubular acidosis and if the examiner is not in a good mood what are the types which is the familial type which is associated yeah. with uh, stone disease which stone uh, type is going to cause stone in the bladder now this is going to take your vivo off track yes okay. so you yes. first decide whether it's a long case it's a short case so short case in family history or it's a, in a long case wherever they ask you the commonest possibility needs to be mentioned first and the rarest should be kept at the last okay sir see the examiner according to me though i have never been an examiner uh, basically is interested in knowing how you have treated or evaluated patients in your residency and once you clear your mch or dnb is the patient safe in your hand so if you are going to think of the common things this is what impresses the examiner if you are going to think of rare causes then sometimes they get irritated and then they start asking questions which are honestly very difficult to answer for even the very well read uh, examiners also yeah okay sir. and uh, see usually the examiners na they have already examined so many students so they have listened to them also so automatically they come to know because i was the examiner i am telling you I, you know after some time we know what is important and what how the students are thinking so if you uh, talk something absurd or something different immediately we will pick it up and we'll start asking about that and i need not know i have to just ask you similarly yes. very often i have seen many of the students uh, giving undue emphasis even in short cases on things which lead to unnecessary questions like the bowel habits are regular for the last 3 months 6 months bowel habits are regular finish go quickly if it's a short case if you want to emphasize that aspect then you should know what is meant by altered bowel habits how do you define constipation in children so then these are questions which unnecessarily come and lead the the you know your viva goes absolutely off track and here also instead of mentioning whether sleep is undisturbed i would say no nocturnal anuriasis that takes care of most of the things and the most important thing is nocturnal anuriasis you must say whether it is there from the beginning or patient had a toilet training and then again he has developed this nocturnal anuriasis so this is also very important is fine so after this what you want to do muruganka sir uh, after uh, this personal history i would like to exam okay fine achin so yes. mriganka can you tell me what are the important things in as uh, he said you will have a very short period of time to examine you can't just do a total examination yes sir mean this short case what are the important things you look for sir uh, first uh, i will look for uh, the back side uh, spine whether there is any tough of hair whether the genitalia are well developed whether uh, whether there is any again again let me interrupt do you start examining the patient from the back 
no sir uh, we uh, entirely is yes, a specific uh, focus examination would be whether bladder is palpable or not whether uh, bladder is uh, i would i would say if somebody ask you sir my examination would start by taking a weight doing a general examination and taking a coming to per abdominal examination where i would be interested in knowing whether the bladder is palpable and how you, what is the status of genitalia don't try to keep on mentioning keep on mentioning 1 2 3 4 after this once the, i have examined the genitalia i would also like to do a per rectal examination and at the same time have an examination of the back and i would do a focused neurological evaluation finish in two sentences you should finish off the entire thing so that your viva goes on the main topic and is not uh, revolving around the history take goran sir i think uh, yes yes so perfect no you are absolutely right because the shorter and sweeter they are it is it is you know better for them so you are absolutely right you know so ojas now tell us what are the important things after listening to dr sharma Uh, so for as uh, the weight and height of the child, uh, ask us in short whether the developmental milestones were achieved at the right time. Then the patient, then the, the uh, parent is uh, in the presence of the parent, where the parent is asked whether the patient, the child has avoided recently or uh, has come and avoided, and whether the patient is having good uh, whether passing stools or not. After that, I will be examining the child full exposed. Uh, uh, where I will first examine the per abdomen examination. Uh, after the general examination, I examine for the per abdomen examination. I look for the bladder. No, Ojas. Ojas. Yes, sir. First, tell us in general examination what are the important things you look for. Number one, will you like to see about the nutritional status of the child? Yes, sir. Because yes, you sir. are suspecting vesical calculus also. Yes, sir. Second thing is you will like to know how he is walking, his gait. because you yes, are sir. also suspecting the, neurogenic bladder yes sir then also about failure or any rickets or any bow leg because if you are suspecting the patient has got uh, uh, some obstruction and if it has caused any back pressure changes and he has developed ckd so first of all you must talk about this general examination his development and then talk about all the different things what you are saying yes sir that is dr sharma has said about that i will look like to look after external genitalia i will look to like to look up up uh, the thing bladder whether it is palpable or not then the lumbar region and then the back and if needed for rectal examination yes sir fine okay achin go ahead Uh, patient is conscious, cooperative, well oriented to time, place, and person. Well built and nourished. Pulse is eighty. BP is one ten by eighty. Respiratory rate is twenty seconds per minute. F M G. Respiratory rate is ninety eight percent of M G. Weight is twenty four kgs. No evidence of pelvic external sinuses. Global mean strength of the T D M. Chest to toe and spine condition is grossly normal. Okay, go ahead. And uh, local examinations of external genitalia are normal. Uh, patient is not circumcised. Prepuce is erectile. Penile meatus is normal. All hernia orifices are normal. No palpable urethral thickening or mass. And bulbo cavernous rectus is present. Okay, Ojas, how will you palpate urethra? Uh, so, uh, so first, uh, uh, penile urethra and the peri uh, the uh, the uh, uh, bulbar urethra. For the penile urethra, uh, holding the penile shaft. First, I'll examine the meatus. Retract the prepucial skin and uh, look at the position of the meatus. Then, for the penile urethra, I will hold the penile shaft between the thumb and the index finger and feel for any uh, thick, uh, any uh, any hard-like or cord-like structure along the penile urethra. For the bulbar urethra, I would uh, like to examine the perineum, uh, which uh, which is examined by uh, four fingers of the right hand and feel for any uh, any palpable uh, thickening or any uh, cord-like structure, sir, in the Balbarius. Yeah, I will just give you one thing or the advice. Yes. Whenever yes, you are palpating penile urethra, don't palpate only with one thumb and finger. Okay. One should be dorsal to ventral, and another should be from lateral to 
one side to another side. So with the, both the hands. Otherwise, sometimes okay. even the normal urethra will appear thickened urethra, or there may be a nodular urethra. Okay. So always uh, don't use only one hand, finger, and thumb. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay. Go ahead, Ajin. Sir, for abdomen. The stiffened abdomen umbilical centrally placed, all proteins will be appearing this patient. No scar sinuses involved with no suprapubic bulge, no fullness of lens. Palpation abdomen uh, is soft, non tender, brain is not visible, no ring element clearness. For patient, the panic not present all over the abdomen, normal liver dilated spine, and lower sounds are normally heard, sir. Fine. So, Shamaji, you want to ask anything about very specific about any uh, examination? The uh, only thing, if somebody has mentioned uh, bulbocavernous reflex, he should also mention that a rectum is not loaded with fecal matter. Oh, fine. This is very important, huh, Ajay? Yes, sir. Because you are also suspecting neurogenic bladder. So, always, whenever in child, there is, there is a difficulty in passing urine and you are examining. Last time also, if you remember, we had discussed that one must do PR examination. And Ojas, how will you do PR examination in eight years old boy? Uh, so with a little finger. Uh, so with a fourth, fourth, fourth finger, uh, we will gently... Which finger? Sir, ring finger. Okay, a ring finger. And uh, someone has asked, how will you elicit Makko Bajasing? Uh, reflex. So we will squeeze the glands gently and uh, insert the fourth finger in the rectum and uh, we will uh, see for any contraction of the NLs. Okay, that is a bulb of cavernous reflex one. So, so, so then ring finger or uh, ring finger, sir? Ring finger, ring finger. Ring finger. The okay. smallest. Okay, okay? fine. Yes. Okay. Now, I'll just, this is a now what you want? How will you go uh, about? Uh, so I will first order baseline investigation, uh, complete blood count, uh, re renal function test, a urine routine microscopy, uh, and a sonography of the abdomen just pelvis. Sharma, uh, yes, sir. Okay, Sharma. Now yes, sir. this is a very special case. So in mm -hmm. these, what are the things they should talk? I think so far they have gone quite well, sir. And uh, this is what I would also want. A CPC urine serum creatinine, uh, urine routine, a KUB and an ultrasound. Okay. Abdomen as well is as there, asking is for... There any role, is there any role of and, uh, uropharmacy in this? Nay, no, I was to mention this. Ki if uh, the child is 8 year old, you can definitely go for a uropharmacy. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So this is very important. If the child is very small, I like, you know, one year, two years, cannot understand, then you may not ask for uropharmacy. But when I think it is, if he is more than three or four years, you can always ask for uropharmacy. Yes. Achin, show them. Yes. Investigation shows hemoglobin is 10.2, count is 12,000, creatine is 1.2, uh, urine pin micro shows RBC is 1 to 2 per hyperfill, WBC is 30 to 40 per hyperfill, proteins plus 1. So this is the uropharmacy report. And what was the sonography report? Yes, sir. Sonography shows gross hydronephrosis seen in left kidney. With upper pole panicamal thickness 14.8 millimeter, middle pole 9 millimeter, lower pole 12 millimeter, and moderate to gross changes of cystitis also seen. Ojas, these are the findings. What will you do? Yes, Sharmaji, you want to comment on anything? No, no, no. I just wanted to ask if this is all what was asked for and has been provided to him. So, so Devashis is asking, no, it is not a normal urine flow. Absolutely not. 
So I would like to do an imaging study uh, to study the urethral passage and the bladder. So I will advise a voiding cystic urethrogram. Yes, Ojas. The child has come with complaints of burning, straining, urine is showing 30 to 40 per cells, and you have got all the investigations done and you have asked for an MCU. You get an MCU done and by evening or next day, he will come with fever with chills. Is there something else which you, which you would like to do initially? First, I would like to admit the patient, start him on antibiotics and so then, uh, yeah. then plan for a... Ujas, I think, see what happens is again, you are trying to, you know, this is what I always feel. You have seen these cases day in and day out in your uh, residency. And if a child comes with urine showing per cells, your first instinct is, and with all these findings, you would get an urine culture done. Culture. So you would ask for urine culture. Correct. The culture takes three days to come. You will start him on antibiotic and you should be ready with an answer which antibiotic and in what dose. And hence the weight of the child is very important in the general examination. Yes. So the weight was 24 kg. Now you tell me which antibiotic would you start and how will you send for culture? Uh, sir, I would like to start with uh, for second or third generation cephalosporin. Name of the drug and the dose. See, when you answer this way now, second generation, third generation, the examiner will ask you, enumerate the cephalosporins which fall in the second generation. Now you are caught. So we can uh, start uh, start him on... Uh, yes, so what does, do you know? Yes, sir. Second and third generation drug. Uh, so, what is the first generation cephalosporin? Okay, uh, first generation is cefiroxam. Uh, first generation is cefiroxam, sir. Uh, first generation is not cefiroxam. No, 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 no sir. Um, okay, first generation is cefiroxam. Cefiroxam and yes, Alok Kumar can answer. See. That is what I'm saying. Simple exam. Yes, Separate exam was the second generation to be. There's a second generation. Yeah, yes, support of time and all yes, these things. This is exactly then, just what happens. When yes, you try yes, to give vague answers, it becomes you get caught. You have given antibiotics to children. Which antibiotic you have given, you tell that name. Cefiroxim, or we can use cefoperazon. Uh, ce oh, yeah. Cefiroxim. Okay. Cefaparazone, I think, would be an overkill for a child who doesn't have issues. Cefiroxim. Cefiroxim. Dose of cefiroxim. Uh, so, 24, uh, I think we can give him a uh, full dose of 1.5 grams. 24 kg. Injectable kg. Uh, for a yeah. child who is absolutely fine, is eating, is able to move around, and is not having fever. Uh, we can give him oral, sir. Oral cefiroxam. Uh, Those. Half the weight tedious. So you can take it uh, 12. Um, so exactly as I don't know the dose, sir. Exactly, I don't know the dose. Sir. Yes, sir. Have you given cefiroxam to such patients routinely in your OPD? Um, no, sir. Yeah, this is exactly why you are having difficulty in answering. Even if you say that you is. want to give cephalexin or cefedroxyl or cefixim, which are more easily acceptable by accepted by children, and even your books mention it, and you are waiting for the culture to come, I think that's a fair enough answer because the child is not in sepsis. He is not having complicated, uh, he is not having involvement of the kidneys or the prostate for that matter. Okay. Rakesh, unmute um, Riganka. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Pankaj Bhai, you can also ask some questions. No, Gorang Bhai, I think it's going good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we have got a Sharma with us, so we are happy with that. Yes. Fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Ojas, you have started yeah. an antibiotic. On the third day, the culture report comes. It shows that it is E. coli and it is sensitive to 
cefexim, ceftriaxone, cefepirazone, nitrofurantoin, uh, trimethoprim, co trimexazole. You have already started the child on an antibiotic to which he has been sensitive. Now, what yes, would sir. be the next step? Uh, so, uh, if the uh, patient is not having fever, then I can consider him for a uh, further evaluation in the form of a so, voiding cystoyotra. If he is not having fever and we are given 48 other antibiotics, non febrile, then we can consider for a further evaluation in the form of a voiding okay. cystoyotra. Now, before we go ahead, one more thing. You have uh, seen the ultrasound report. Have a look at it again, uh, both you, Ojas and Migang. Yes, sir. Is there something missing in this ultrasound report? The post void residue is not mentioned. Yeah, pre void and post void both are not mentioned. Yes, sir. Now, what would be the bladder capacity of this child? Would you expect? Sir, age plus 2 into 30. So it yeah, would yeah. be age is 8, sir. Mm -hmm. 8 plus 2, 10 into 30. So around 300 ml. Okay. So, so you're right. They have not mentioned the post void residual urine. And now you have covered him up with antibiotics and you would like to have a voiding sister urethrogram. Yes. Uh, anything else, Gorang, sir? Yeah, I am waiting for that only. That what you have, uh, you know, brought down is most important. When there are pus cells, they should not go directly for uh, voiding sister urethrogram. So that is the most important thing. They must treat. And in exam, this is required, the presence of mind. Whenever there is first cells, please ask for culture, treat antibiotic, and you should know that which antibiotic to be used in children. Perfect. Okay. So now the question is whether you like to do RGU also, or you will like to do only VCU. Someone has asked about collection of uh, urine. Okay. So, Mriganka, can you tell us what are the different ways you will like to collect urine for culture and sensitivity? Sir, ideally, uh, midstream urine we can collect. And also, if it is difficult or if he is catheter, then we can go for SPC or um, S supra pubic aspiration of the urine, urine is also possible. Sir. So, if the child is very young, and cannot understand midstream, then the suprabibic puncture will be the idea. Yes. yes sir. What is the colony count which is significant in this child? If it is a midstream sample and when it is a suprabibic sample? Brigalka, you can answer. So 10 to the power 5 would be significant if it is midstream and uh, lesser if it is SPC, sir. Uh, this is this is exactly why I asked this question because uh, in a symptomatic patient, what is the colony count which is significant when you do a suprapubic aspiration? Yeah, I think somebody has answered. Ten right. days to three. Yes. Normally it is ten days to five, but in this case, ten days to three is, is also significant. And suprapubic even ten days to two becomes significant. Yeah. Somebody mentioned 50,000 colony count. Even some, there are some pediatric societies. I exactly forget which one. They follow that particular thing. So you need to, you need to, you know, there are, I think the Australian society, the International Pediatric Society, the uh, AUA, everybody has small uh, variation. I, I don't remember the recent edition, but the older edition of Campbell definitely had a chapter on pediatric UTI and it did mention, there was a chart which mentioned all the uh, different uh, significant colony counts. So you need to be aware of that because very often in your practice, you will come across microbiologists who will report the urine as sterile when the colony count is 10 raised to 4, but that is erroneous. So given that in Campbell, it is mentioned 10 raised to 2. Yes. In symptomatic patient. And especially when it's a SPC uh, aspiration. Yes. Supra pubic, not SPC. Yes. Supra pubic yes. aspiration. Yes. aspiration, it is 10 raised to 2. Yes. So, so in a even, symptomatic patient, even 100 colony count should be considered as significant. Yes. So, so midstream will also become 10 raised to 2 only, or midstream, you should say 10 raised to 3. 
Yes. Mid stream we should say as 10 raised to 3 or 10 raised to 2, sir? 10 raised to 3, that's what I remember, but Confirm. Uh, please confirm that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now what next? VCOG. So again, here, when you were asked how to collect the sample, do not talk of super weak aspiration in this child. A child who is able to void and void on command, you do not need super weak aspiration. You can easily collect a proper midstream sample. So super weak okay. aspiration will be in a patient where uh, uh, so collection uh, through a natural void is difficult. Yes, sir. Correct. So that is the reason I said that if the child is more than two years, we can always tell him to pass urine and he will do it. Yes. So lesser than that, I think supravivic aspiration will be of a great help. Okay, Achin, now show. So who wants to read? Sir, uh, this is a... This is a cystogram, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, showing dilatation, uh, bladder irregularity of the bladder wall and well distended bladder, sir. And uh, there is a dilatation of the posterior urethra, prosthetic urethra, and uh, anterior uh, penile urethra. Uh, there is a white bladder neck and There is a cut cut in the yeah. So there is no vesicouretric reflex. Oh, that one is. How would you do an anything no. or a BCOG in a child? The. Uh, uh, Under mild uh, eight years old. Have you done? Have you ever done an MCU? Yes, sir. MCU we have done, sir. So so under gravity we will uh, allow the contrast to after get it oh yes you want to you want to yes. take over yes sir, sir uh, first uh, uh, we could we uh, attend filling of the we first make a contrast like we take around uh, 5 to 10 ml of the contrast and dilute with 100 to 200 ml of uh, normal saline then we take insert we meet under uh, uh, after filling the local area we will insert an infant feeding tube uh, uh, and uh, with infant feeding tube, we'll, we'll push the, uh, we'll fill up the bladder with the contrast. Uh, then uh, ask the patient to first take a scout film uh, uh, and up to know the bladder status and then ask the child to void and then, then take the serial films after removing the infant feeding tube. Yes. Anybody would like to add what all he has missed out? How I would love to listen to an answer would be that I would explain the procedure to the parents under the cover of antibiotic, ascertaining and confirming that he has taken the morning dose of antibiotic. I would take the patient to the radiology suit. First, get a plain X-ray KUB done. Now, whether you do an ascending urethrogram or an MCU, the first film is the KUB film. Yes. Now, by this time, you should mentally calculate what is the capacity of the bladder. Roughly, as Mrigank had mentioned, the formula age in years plus 2 into 30, that comes to 300 ml. But will you distend this bladder to 300 ml? So no, the, uh, not allow you also, and it is wrong. You no, are not supposed to two. overfill the bladder. So, as and if you it is pertaining to this particular case, I would be very particular in saying that, sir, uh, there would be a dilemma in my mind whether I should first do an ascending urethrogram because his dominant complaint was straining while passing urine. 
so i would try with uh, under all aseptic precautions i would pass a seven or eight number infant feeding tube if this infant feeding tube doesn't go easily then i would do an ascending urethrogram if it goes in easily then i would instill the contrast slowly without pressure and the amount that needs to be instilled is about 200 ml okay now yes, why this 200 ml becomes important is because when ojas answered he said i will take 5 to 10 cc of urography and i would put it in 100 to 200 now the moment you give vague answers the examiner knows you have never done an mcu in with a, in a child and most of the examiners who are interested in pediatric urology they insist that the mcu is an investigation which should be done by the urologist because otherwise the in, uh, you you are usually not getting the information that you want and once you instill and the patient starts to get a sensation of full bladder because he's an 8 year old child you would take a scout film then you would remove the infant feeding tube and wait and ask the child to void during voiding you will take one film and once he has completed the act of voiding if not on the table then go to the bathroom and pass urine you would take a post void film so this would all the information and a very ideal scenario would be a continuous fluoroscopic monitoring because then you would be able to pick up reflux much better than in a static uh, conventional way in which mcus are being done okay yes sir yes sir yanendra yes. i think even the dilution dilution that was mentioned was quite wrong yes yes uh, so dilution yeah 5 percent dilution is absolutely not acceptable okay the dilution would uh, means it will maximum be 1 in 4 nothing less than that yes okay yes. okay now anybody can read this uh, film the film which is seen on your left hand side the straight film you know the patient is in supine position Ojas, can you read it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this is a uh, initial scout film after filling the bladder. So we can see that the bladder is adequately distended. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, yeah, I think this is a scout film, sir. That is adequately distended. There is no reflux seen on either side. Uh, and then in the uh, film on the other side, these are the serial films in which uh, we can see that the uh there is a dilated post uh, prostatic urethra and the anterior urethra appears uh, normal um bladder so margins the are very on your left hand side the film on your left hand yes. side not the right yes, hand side left side uh, so bladder has a, a regular outline well distended uh no diverticular seen वो जो स्पॉट्स दिख रहे हैं वो क्या है बिलो द इंफीरियर रेमस ऑफ द पीबीस या ये 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 जो स्पॉट दिख रहे हैं नीचे दो या जो Somebody is pointing it out. Yes, these are the spots. What 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 are they? The urethra is not seen. So is it the contrast which has come over there? Yes, yeah, the contrast which has uh, extra lacerated while filling. While filling, but you put an infant feeding tube in the bladder, so and there the evidence of infant feeding tube is also not seen. Posterior. No, no, no. Devashish, it's not collection of contrast in the posterior urethra. Posterior urethra is clearly seen. It is not even visualized over there. What are the possibilities? Yeah. Bhaganka, what are the possibilities? Sir, uh, some di dilatation of the. Uh, 
इतनी बड़ी कॉइल आई एफ टी देवाशीष नहीं हो सकती है यूरेट्रल डायबिटिकल यू शुड फर्स्ट सी दूरिथ्रा कभी एंडोन ग्लांस देखा है क्या लेन के यूबी में देर है मिस्टेकन ग्लांस फॉर इवन वसाइकल कैलकुलस एंड प्रोस्टेटिक रिटल कैलकुलस so so this can be yes yes sir. So don't uh, think of of all this thing unless and until you see how can you see how talk whether whether it is diverticulum or whether it is is diverticulum or a fistula any other thing when you can't see the urethra I don't think you should comment on that mm-hmm. fine so come to the right side what are the things you are seeing on the right side और मृगन का मृगन का कैन यू जस्ट टेल अस व्हाट आर द टू इंपोर्टेंट थ्री इंपोर्टेंट थिंग्स यू आर सीइंग यस सर लेदर अ नॉर्मल शेप नो सर इट लुक्स लाइक अ वाइड नेक डाइवर्टिकल सर पोस्टीरियर यूरेट्रल डाइलेटेशन इज देयर एंड ब्लडर अपीयर्स टू बी बीन शेप किडनी शेप ओके एंड व्हाट इज देयर ऑन द ब्लडर नेक ladder neck appears to be uh, wide oh yes one elevated bladder neck and so there is direct prostatic urethra bladder it neck is, is hypertrophic hypertrophic bladder neck yes. elevated you will okay. have to call it hypertrophic 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 thickened thickened yes hypertrophic right so these are the important things you have to see because your management also will depend on that okay now this is a uh, dr sharma has already explained you okay, when you will do uh, retrograde urethrogram and in which cases so you tell me in posterior urethral wall what is important rgu or v, uh, voiding cyst urethrogram or oh, just so voiding cyst urethral wall because we are I, I, studying the no, posterior rgu Uh, so in retrograde urethrogram is mainly for the anterior urethra whereas the voiding cyst urethrogram mainly you see the no, posterior no but why uh, why give me the reason so valve like so it will prevent the uh, pardon so valve uh, that valve uh, posterior urethral valve will uh, be identified in the MC, uh, voiding cyst urethrogram because uh, urine will not be able to go out bladder outlet obstruction will be prominent so in oh, the valve are opening only in one direction, one direction. so one direction you yes. do it from if you do rgu you may not be able to see that obstruction and you may not be able to see the valves yes so sir they are well okay appreciated only in voiding program and that also dr sharma has very clearly said if you do video it is the best one because you it is a dynamic and you can see the many changes which are taking place as well as if there is a reflux usually the lower reflux we miss okay fine so now this is the case so mrigankar now what you want to do sir uh, now we want to do sir uh, a cystoscopy and uh, proceed you want to do a cystoscopy and proceed so what do you want to do in a cystoscopy sir fulguration of the sir uh, posterior urethral valve so you haven't diagnosed the po wall so far and interestingly in this patient who complains of straining the postoid mcu film shows absolutely the bladder is empty he may be voiding with a poor stream he may be straining but he is emptying his bladder completely to so diagnostic cystoscopy 
well you mm -hmm. can but then you will have to suppose if i want to put forth an argument saying ki why not evaluate the upper tract first before you want to go for a diagnostic cystoscopy sir yes. uh, ultrasound oh uh, yeah we can do sir uh, yeah, we yeah. can do but will you do that the basic dictum which i follow and uh, i think gorang sir will be a better person to answer that would be whatever can be done without anesthesia which are which is relatively less invasive should be done first and then you go for the invasive one the dtps you must what dr sharma is saying is right okay first of all less invasive the procedure better it is correct yes. at the same time you must come to a proper diagnosis and you should know what treatment you want to give so all the investigations you must do so that you become wiser as far as the treatment part is concerned so in this case what are the things now you have understood what are the things that are that you have seen in this investigation so mrigankar enumerated sir uh, uh, with that boiling cysto urethrogram we have come into conclusion that there is an obstruction uh, suggestive of a posterior urethral valve uh, okay There because dil dilatation, dilatation of the posterior is dilatation of the posterior urethra which is seen that But doesn't yes, mean that it is pure valve in a 8 year old child with a 2 month history right so if there is a, if, if 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 this would be a 3 month old infant yes this statement could be taken 8 year old child with only a 2 month history with some dilatation seen you all could be one of the possibilities but not the diagnosis so uh, so are you understood the rectin yes sir yes sir second thing is there is a hypertrophy of the bladder neck third thing is is a very poor flow but hardly any reticular urine and the last and most important the sonography is saying that one sided hydronephrosis yes. but there is no reflux yes sir fine ojas you are with us yes sir yes sir yes sir so now what you want to do uh, uh, we will there is hydronephrosis uh, ct scan what is the creatinine One point two. Is it normal? Creatinine is normal. Re, uh, little borderline, sir. Raise for this. So what should be the creatinine? So uh, is twenty four kg, boy. One. Six two point eight would be normal for him. Perfect. Point point six two point point eight will be normal for this year. Very correct. Fine. So always uh, you should know that formula. Okay. Yes, sir. Write it down on your wall. Yes. And every day morning you should look at it. There are few things, few charts you must see every day in the morning. Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. so this is a situation so now next what you want to do sir dtp pardon sir uh, renogram sir uh, to know the differential function of the kidney okay okay sharma ji now can you just elaborate means or uh, throw some light on this sir what, what are the things what? now this patient has got uh, hydronephrosis also and so basically you will go ahead with the investigation for the kidney or first you will treat the posterior ureter valves or whatever it is obstruction and then decide further now once he is under power of antibiotics i would you know it's already enough four to five days and i would repeat his cbc and creatinine because it's equally possible that his creatinine is uh, affected by infection so i would repeat his cbc and creatinine and i would do a renogram but i would also explain to the parents that he would need i would definitely would like to have a neurological evaluation before i undertake a cystoscopy okay 
so in that case what you like to do what you will suggest so we will catheterize the patient and get to the nadir uh, creatine and then there is no need to catheterize the he is emptying his bladder why should you catheterize <clears throat> You understood, na? Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is if he is free of infection, he is emptying his bladder completely, and he is creating an. If it is repeated after five days, if it is coming to point eight, why? What is the need to catheterize him? But I would, if it's a short history and an eight-year-old child with only a dilated posterior urethra, seen I and the way the bladder looks, I would have a neurological evaluation. Before I do an intervention, because there are three investigations which are now there in my mind. One is a evaluation of the upper tracts. Right. Second is evaluation of the urethra by scopy, and the third is evaluation of the bladder by a pressure flow study or a urodynamics. Hmm. And it will it will be the interplay of all these three things along with the input of the neurologist, which will decide the further management. Okay. So just you understood what are yes, the sir. three yes, important sir. things? Yes, sir. Huh? One is the renogram to find out the differential function as function. well as whether there is an obstruction or not. Yes, sir. Understood. So what option? What type of obstruction you are expecting? Uh, so it could be a no, no, it is yes, sir. Uh, so one is the posterior urethra valve. Second, sir, could it could be a sign? No, what is? Why we are talking about the kidney? पॉसिबिलिटीज वेन देर इज नो रिप्लक्स इन सो वॉट इट कैन बी Structure could be PUJO, sir. Uh, yeah, again, you are coming to the same thing. When we are saying it is hydro urethro, then hydro nephrosis. Sir, right. he is right, sir. He Mirigank is right because ultrasound is mentioning only gross hydro nephrosis. It is not mentioning hydro urethro nephrosis. Okay, okay, okay. I thought okay. it was uh, because it, we have taken a long history. Now he is with me for. now more than uh, 20 years so fine this actually this is not showing properly this is not saying but uh, there was a hydro urethral nephrosis okay mirigangas so if there was a hydro urethral nephrosis what you are suspecting and there is no reflux uh, so it could be mega Fine. So the three important things is one is the renogram to find out the status of both the kidneys and whether there is an obstruction or not. Second thing is urodynamic study and the third is histoscopy to find out whether there is a stricture, whether there is an other type of obstruction or whether there is a posterior valve. Yes. Okay, Achin, what we had done? See, you see what has happened is that uh, all the because this was done somewhere else so there they had done posterior third valve fulguration that time and they had not done any other investigation but in exam as dr sharma said these are the three important things you have so okay now let us say how we are going to do fulguration or how we are going to remove the posterior third valve what are the different techniques So, 
sir uh, using a, a, a pediatric cystoscope uh, either uh, by using if we have a 7.5 to 9 french uh, cystoscope we can use a bugby electrode or maybe a laser in which we uh, incise uh, at uh, 5 and 7 o'clock or uh, and also could be dorsal 12 o'clock and if we have a, a larger 9.5 cm, then we could use uh, make use of a, a Collins knife to give similar incision at 5 and 7 o'clock uh, with an additional of 12 o'clock as well, possible. Sir, please go ahead. Sir, under GA in lithotomy uh, position, sir, we, we will do first a ureteroscopy using a pediatric scope, sir, and fill the bladder and stop the inflow channel. Slowly withdraw the scope and then keeping the inflow channel closed, sir. And then we will give a little uh, suprapubic pressure. The valve will become whitey, sir. And uh, then we can uh, change, the, change the system to resectoscope. And uh, with cold knife, we can uh, ablate uh, using a cold or hot knife, sir. And then after that, we will deploy, a, uh, put a... Kind of just my advice would be ki you answer in exam what you have seen if you have not done also what you have seen see what happens very often when you are answering you keep on saying I can do it with cold knife I can do it with laser I can do it with bhakti you can do it with everything what you have seen what you have done mention that right so if you have seen bhakti being used say bugby. If you have seen laser being used, you say laser. If you have seen a resectoscope being used, you mention resectoscope. This is what I have seen. Fair enough. So you will be more you, know, the, you will be more confident in answering what the examiner wants to ask you. When you give vague answers, it means either you have not seen or you are just trying to now uh, answer from what you have read from your books. Fine. So, just do you uh, do you know any yes, other sir. method earlier when uh, we didn't have pediatric scope? Uh, do you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Vesicostomy. No. Is asking any other method of uh, uh, pediatric method of ablating the walls or incising the walls? There, is, there was a hook called as a Brahms hook. Uh, Brahms hook. Oh. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. So, there, there, were, so there were two ways of doing. One was a blind and second was under uh, Siam or Siam or under uh, uh, screening. Okay. So what they used to do blindly is just put a hook inside because the valve will allow to go and then bring it back. So when the it comes near the valve, it, it will get hooked and you can just pull it and break the valve. Second method was like how we are doing uh, voiding cystogram, the same way you fill up and under CM, you can see the valve going inside the bladder and coming up to the valve and then you pull it and you can tear the valve. So these were the two different ways of ablating or uh, breaking the bar, okay? And yes. this was a mechanical. There was no other energy except a kinetic energy. Nothing was used. Fine, any other uh, matter? So, so what is the name of the hook? Ram's hook. I think this is uh, what- uh, So what is the name of that hook, sir, again? Name of the hook again, sir? Name of the hook? Abraham's, Abraham's hook. Abraham's hook, okay, Abraham's hook, okay. Sir. Fine. So now the fulguration was done. How will you follow up? Sir, along uh, with uh, fulguration, it's... sir, one query, sir, uh, blood and neck was elevated. Should we do a blood and neck incision, sir? Yeah, this uh, is a question. Come on, answer. You answer. So I think uh, better to do. You will do it? He is an eight years old boy. No. No, sir. Hypertrophy no, is what secondary or primary? 
secondary to yes sir. once this obstruction goes away then it should resolve because remedy is called um, sir, Mrigang has a very valid question, and this is done by some pediatric urologists across the world that they incise the bladder neck also because it's sometimes so steep and it's very difficult to enter the bladder from the dilated posterior urethra. And in fact, this is one of the problems that you face even when you do an MCU that the infant feeding tube that you pass it tends to coil in the posterior urethra and it doesn't reach into the bladder. So, you, you have a valid question. But this is controversial. There are some people who advocate doing a bladder neck incision, while others say that this can increase the risk of retrograde ejaculation, ejaculation. and uh, should not be done. If you ask my personal view, I would say in an eight-year-old child, don't do it. No. But uh, what you are saying now, Gyananda, yeah. I am telling you the same thing, but I do on the second stage. Means, first yes. I do fulguration of valve. I will look you know, follow up the patient. When the second time, when I'm going inside, yes. I will talk to the parent, parents because uh, if there is a retrograde ejaculation and uh, after marriage, if there are lots of problems, you know, they will blame you. Yes. They will not realize that you have done something which is good necessary and it is good for uh, that ch child. So first time I will just burn the valve and second time when I go inside and if I think it is needed, then I do the bladder neck incision. But as you said very rightly, in eight years old child, if possible, just avoid it. Mrigan Gorang sir very rightly said, Ki, you don't do it in the primary sitting. See, you have a chance of doing a urodynamics. And if yes. uh, that gives you a clear cut idea that there is some element of uh, bladder neck obstruction, if you do a video urodynamics, yes. then you would be helped. But in a Eight-year-old child sometimes giving alpha blockers works equally well. So never do it in a primary setting. This is what I, I follow. Uh, sir is a better person. He's an examiner also. What the examiner wants is more important sometimes. Yeah. So usually say, no, I will not like to do in eight-year-old child. I will like to wait and then see what is the effect of fulguration. And later stage, I will decide. That yes. is the better answer. Fine. Okay, so now how will you follow up? Mriganka? So we will uh, follow up with, uh, sir, uh, next, uh, in a subsequent week, we will do an ultrasound to see whether there is any decompression or whether the resolution of any hydronephrosis that was uh, detected earlier. Mriganka, also... Mriganka, Mriganka, Mriganka. I, I, I am a bit hastening up the things because we can discuss a lot of things. See, what I would answer is, or what I would prefer it to be answered as, once you have kept the catheter for uh, for at least 48 hours and once you remove it, after removal of the catheter, sir, I would like to see his stream and if possible, like to do a Euroflow also. Yes. So now you have answered in two ways that you have a subjective as well as an objective evaluation of the success that has been achieved by doing a wall fulguration. Now your argument that after one week you will do an ultrasound to look for regression of hydronephrosis, I don't think the hydronephrosis will regress within a matter of a week. So once you have seen that, you would keep the child on antibiotics or on chemoprophylaxis and then you are right in saying I would like to follow up after a month, not within a week. Within a week, nothing changes. Nothing changes. Yes. And when the child comes back after a month, after four weeks, I would like to know from the history whether he is having complete symptomatic improvement because that was why he had come to you for in the first place. And once there is symptomatic improvement, his subjective evaluation, then you go for the objective evaluation in the form of doing a urine routine, a serum creatinine, an ultrasound, and a Euroflow that time. And if things are fine, then you would do a urodynamics in this child. And of course, I take into consideration that a renogram has been done in the past so that you have a baseline renal function known to you. Yes. So can we offer him a circumcision also in later? If you go by the book, it's not indicated. Yes. The benefit is within first six months or within one year. Okay, sir. Even for and the, the practice is fully retractable. 
Yeah, yes. if the skin is retractable, then it is not indicated. Yes, in a neurogenic bladder, you can talk of uh, circumcision, but not in this case. Fine. So ideally, as Dr. Sharma has said, you should do, follow up one with the urine routine. Second thing is subjective and objective, whether patient has improved or not by doing uh, uroflowmetry if you want, ultrasonography. And then if required, DTPA scan to find out whether the function has improved or not. Okay. So Achin, now tell yes. us what happened. Uh, sir, after this thing was done, patient was lost to follow for next 23 years. Uh, for next 23 years, he never came back. This whole procedure was done outside somewhere. After the 23 years, he came to us with new complaints. Yeah. So tell us, what happened? Uh, now the same person, 28 years of uh, age, uh, Mumbai Achim, resident. Achim, yes. Achim. Yes. 8 plus 23 is 31. Why should he be 28 now? No, sir. Is, the previous life should be 20 years, actually. Okay, thank yes. you. He has done some mistake in yes. calculator. Yes. Uh, the reason, may... reason Achint is not to point out the mistake, Mrigank and Ojas, if such a thing happens in exam and you are able to point out, very politely say, Ki, sir, ye aisa aisa hai. so it should be 31. Is there some fallacy in the follow-up? See, this gives an impression to the examiner that you are very sharp in picking up these small little things. Yes, sir. Yeah, the intention was not to point out the mistake to Achin, but it was just to try to bring to your attention that you, your mind should be focused on all small little things that are being presented to you in your examination. Yeah, please yes, go ahead. Yeah, yes. I think go ahead. Yeah, no, it's the same patient, 28 years of age, resident of Mumbai, now is a clerk by profession, complains of burning mutation since seven days. Okay, go ahead. Since so, we know the history. Uh, and it is associated with increased frequency 10 to 15 times per day and nocturia sir, two times per night with uh, no other alert symptom. IPSA score is 6 by 35. Sir. What is the flaw in this or Sir, what is the? Sorry, sir. Flaw, flaw in this particular slide. Frequency is 10 to 15 times. So the IPSA score is the frequency yes. and the first test 10 to 15. Here it is saying the score is only 3. Probably it would be more. And, uh, and Nocturia? Nocturia. Nocturia. Straining. Sir, there's one no, quality of life. Yes. No, I think quality of life is not there. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you know, issue of pain, fever, vomiting, frank, maturia, lithuria, pyria, facial puffiness, exhaustion, dyspnea, or lower limb edema, sir. And past history, as you already know, issue of previous fulguration, five years of age. Birth history, you already know, sir. Nothing. See, uh, Dr. Sharma, na, he is pointing out all these small, small points which are very important. Because in exam, you, you know, you also may write down the same way and there may not be a proper calculation or, you know, you will do all these mistakes and the examiner will pick it up. Yes. So you have to be very, very clear in your mind and you must elaborate the history properly. Okay, okay. go ahead. Yes, general information, everything is fine, sir. Patient's conscious, cooperative, oriented, yeah. and built-in nourish is proper. And ex external genitalia, normal, non-circumcised, previous retractory, no palpable urethral. And per examination was done, uh, no fissure facial hemorrhoids. Penal tone is normal. Rostate is flat, form inconsistency, smooth surface, non-tender. Upper border can be reached, median sulcus palpable, rectal mucosa, non adherent no blood on gloves. And for abdomen, sir, umbilical centrally placed, all cordates moving equally with respiration, no scars, and anything, gauge veins, and palpation soft, non tender, and the rest of everything is normal, sir. Other systems are also normal, sir. Okay, so, Briganga, now this is the, now you know the history, 
he has undergone fulguration of posterior valve yes sir we have not done dtps scan that time we have not done neurodynamic study okay yes at that time and now the patient has come what we will do now sir we will uh, do the initial uh, bio blood chemistry uh, serum creatinine and uh, routine urine microscopy followed by ultrasound with post weight residue and a uroflometry uh, and a uroflometry yes. okay so achin yes sir the hemoglobin is 9.2 sir count is 8000 creatinine is 1.9 Urine routine microscopy plus is hundred to one ten per hyperfill RBC is ten to twelve per hyperfill protein urea plus two turbid urine acidic pH yeah go ahead and USG QB shows right kidney sixteen by nine centimeter enlarged with severe thinning of parenchyma with multiple concretions in all calices with gross hydronephrosis with moderate dietary ureter. And left kidney shows fourteen by ten centimeter and large with severe thinning of parenchyma with gross hydronephrosis, with few concretions noted in lower calyx with moderately dilated ureter. Right more than left urinary bladder shows diffuse thickening of bladder wall up to five point six millimeter with trabeculations with pre word three eighty cc and post word eighty cc. Prostate is nine grams. Okay, and uroflometing. Yes. So fine, Bregenka. This is the thing. Now what we'll do? So first, send a urine culture as well. Now we have uh, first also send a urine culture. Uh, and then uh, starting on antibiotics, he's having burning sensation. But uh, uh, just uh, we will start him on antibiotics. We have the history. We'll start him on antibiotics. Uh, if there is no fever, then we can start him on initial oral antibiotics and. uh then uh repeat uh we have a urology option so we again first go for a rgu plus mcu so for this patient so now he After is a I young fellow which antibiotic yes, you will use so in this case now we can use uh, uh sir uh, uh, cefiroxim 1.5 grams or uh, cefiroxim 1.5 grams could be used iv Or we can start him on tablet GPCB. Uh, like uh, we can use uh, cefiroxim plus fibrinogen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trade names. Yes, sir. Mention trade names. Yes, sir. So cefiroxim plus fibrinogen acid or uh, plain cefiroxim tablet could also be started. So how will you select the antibiotic? Which antibiotic you should select? Uh, so one which attains high concentrations in urine uh, patient is so one one which is very sensitive second sensitive. it could be a cheaper and third it could be lower in the is the generation yes understood so yes, if sir. the first generation is sensitive then don't use the second or third generation if there are two drugs which are available and both are sensitive And one is the cheaper one. Use the cheaper one. Or just the drug which has a very high concentration in urine is nitrofurantoin. Why not use that? Yeah. See, can... if you see, na even if you see the uh, nitrofurantoin, almost ninety percent. Now though it has become eighty percent, but once upon a time it was ninety percent time it was sensitive. So one is a nitrofurantoin. Second is quinolones. Quinolones is uh, is also a good drug for urine tract infection. Okay. So two forty. Okay, Brigan ka. Yes. You have treated this patient. You have asked for the culture. Culture is also showing the same thing that nitrofurantoin was sensitive, and you have treated him with nitrofurantoin. Now next what? Sir, sir, can I interrupt? Would yeah. you prefer nitrofurantoin? I will give you my answer. I will not use nitrofurantoin. Spectrum. You you tell us. If they can't answer, you tell us. Yeah. See, his creatinine is raised. 
he had presented with fever if i am not wrong so no fever only burning no fever no fever so even is creatine is raised this drug will not be excreted that well in urine once the creat is raised nitrofurantoin is not a good drug to be used or the okay. dose becomes much less so i would prefer either a fluoroquinolone or a cephalosporin and especially with the findings of bilateral hydronephrosis and then next i would go for further imaging studies yeah uh, so so it's this is a very very valid and practical point uh, dr sharma has given you that even in your practice also you please remember that nitrofurantoin in such cases if possible because we get carried away even i get carried away i say nitrofurantoin well very good and start it but uh, this is a very valid point Fine. Uh, so, sir, I uh, had two questions, sir. Uh, so, in this case, twenty-eight year old, we should also ask for the sexual history and uh, local examination uh, yes, of the. Sir. Yes, sir. Very correct. Sexual history and local examination for any lesions, we should also yes, take yes. twenty-eight yeah. years. Yeah, sexual history is normal, and uh, he has got one child also. Mm -hmm. Okay. No retrograde. And they don't want second child. That also no. I. Yeah. Okay, fine. So now, next what? So, and uh, sir, so next would be sir voiding uh, cystouretrica based on. Achha, uh, Achin, do we have all these things? Voiding cystouretrica not for this particular. Ganka, I would, if I am asked to evaluate, I would do an ascending urethrogram to rule out a stricture. Once the stricture is ruled out, what is there is is the bladder at fault because if you look at the voiding pattern, he has taken a very long time to initiate the flow, and then it's a stricter type of voiding which indicates that he is straining a lot while voiding. Yes, sir, straining. Okay. Now, which means that there is something grossly wrong and bilateral hydronephrosis. So something is grossly wrong with the bladder. Yes, sir. Now, i would then suggest going for a video urodynamics which will give me both the things it will give me an idea about what you would like to know by doing an mco and plus it will give me an idea about what the bladder is working like yes achin kya hua isme aage sir ct kb plane was done Uh, right kidney was enlarged approximately 16 cm in size with gross hydronephrosis with marked parenchymal thinning with multiple calculi small 3 to 4 mm in all the cases and left kidney is also 15 cm in size with gross hydronephrosis with no calculi with no calculi both ureter or bladder gross hydronephrosis marked parenchymal thinning I won't do it. Okay. Yeah. So now next what? The so, renogram first. Uh, bladder cap. No girl play not in any way. Okay. So, renogram okay. as well as urogram. Have you done anything study. more than this? What would you do first? Urodynamics or a urogram? A renogram. Uh, so Bilateral sir. Hydrouretral nephrosis. पैथोलॉजी पे पे लग रही है? So, bladder पे लग रही है। है। सर। 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 का? का? Are you going to become a wiser number one and uh, going to change your manner? Sir, uh, first uh, we will know the different uh, if any pop up. Uh, uh, both the kidneys are comp. Uh, we will know the function. He has got bilateral hydronephrosis, hydro. Yeah. Okay. He has got bilateral hydronephrosis, hydroureter. Initially there was no reflux, and uh, 
it has deteriorated his creatinine is raised so in this case what is more important urodynamic study or dtpa renal scan urodynamic urodynamic because with urodynamic you are going to decide the line of treatment yes. correct yes fine so it was showing bladder outlet obstruction decompensated bladder outlet obstruction there was no problem in putting the infant feeding tube inside 10 french it was absolutely clear yes mriganga so uh, so bladder outlet obstruction uh, could be due to that uh, residual uh, pulgaration now we what do you want to do you know that uh, so it could be with the residual wall or it could be with the residual bladder neck hypertrophy so uh, that we would understand uh, like we have a urodynamics first and then we would understand that uh, as you say it's bladder outlet obstruction should be residual valves or because the bladder neck hypertrophy uh, or uh, so this has to be then evaluated by a, a cystoscopy to know the current status okay so dr sharma we went ahead and did the bladder neck incision is it exam is it okay after urodynamic sir, study if we go inside sir uh, if urodynamic shows that the bladder is contracting very well and absolutely fine and with a normal capacity compliance and everything then bladder neck incision i would accept it otherwise but his urodynamics would be definitely interesting i expect it to be a low compliant low capacity bladder Okay, so Achin, what we did? Uh, yeah, this was bladder neck incision and bladder biopsy. Fine. Okay. Now what happened next? Next, sir. Again, patient came, and the next two years, patient was admitted twice in a local hospital for pyelonephritis, for which he was treated conservatively. And then again, after one year, after last admission, he came with left flank pain. With increased frequency and burning maturation since one month. So now this patient has got recurrent urinary tract infection and pyelonephritis. So Mriganka, now what you want to do? And he has got bilateral hydronephrosis, hydrourethral, no reflux. It is most probably primary obstructive mega ureter or BUJ obstruction. Yes, sir. then uh, in this scenario sir and this hydronephrosis is increasing as you can see as yes, thinning of parenchyma so function is uh, we have to see for the function if any function is there and if not yes sir so you know yeah the function will not make any difference now it is the bladder my interest is always now urodynamics and how bad the bladder is and how well you can normalize it wo upar 40 dikhai ya 30 dikhai koi farak nahi padega our aim should be he should not go towards a stage where he ends up requiring renal replacement therapy so sir uh, we we will uh, advise him uh, start of medical uh, manage okay. yeah we are last two years he is on a medication only medication on this and many many drugs are now resistant but uh, um, uh, oh just what is what is your see the idea of keeping this is we will ask you what you will do what the books are saying what the expert like dr sharma is saying and what we have done because i am following up this patient last 14 years now and many procedures and many things have been done uh, so in this case uh, i would like to do first uh, again a cystoscopy with uh, retrograde 
like rgp as well post so void residual urine is only 30 cc of 230 ml, his flow has improved it is yeah, much so better so i let to do a uh, cystoscopy with uh, rgp so uh, retrograde but pyloneph- he is coming with a recurrent pyelonephritis he has got bilateral hydronephrosis hydrourethral and he has got obstruction at vasico uretic junction then reimplantation oh, okay. 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 <laughs> yes. like no right we did sir. i'm telling you okay sir i did reimplantation of ureter okay sir go ahead did bilateral ureteric so let us ask sharma ji sir main nahi karta Huh. may i would i would look at now they have mentioned uh, nor- normal compliance sir i would be very astonished by the fact that the capacity is normal the proprioception is normal there is no over activity the compliance is normal and then why should bilateral hydrourethral nephrosis should develop it is just not possible in the absence of reflux in the absence of a bladder pathology it is very difficult to comprehend why bilateral hydrourethral nephrosis should develop yeah. when initially it was more only on the left side now you would expect with a bladder pathology that the left side would keep on deteriorating more but here the right side has deteriorated much more the function percentage function is about 28% on the right side and uh, much more on the left side though it would be a bit erroneous in the presence of infection and uh, uh, raised creatinine but urodynamics normal is something which i will have to take with yeah. a cutora of salt i just tell you inch of salt i i talked to couple of pediatric the senior surgeons and they told me the gorang this is a primary uh, obstructive mega ureter sir not possible and it is, so any way so then i said to, okay now there was no other way the obstruction was increasing infection was in between coming in control again it was uh, recurrent infection was there so that is why we decided to do the reimplantation of ureter thinking that this is a primary and uh, when we uh, operated him the definitely there was a, like you know how do you see the primary mega ureter the same way the lower end of the ureter was like that only so now this is a story now how will you follow up so okay uh, ganender yeah. how you will follow up this patient suppose if you don't operate then how will you follow up i would you know i wouldn't agree you know urodynamics is something which is sometimes it uh, misleads you much more than it gives you information uh, this has been my experience so i would look at you know the fact that right from beginning if you look at it the bladder was not looking normal at all there was yeah. irregularity the way it was uh, raised so with if he is having repeated episodes of uti i would first control the uti by putting him on a catheter and giving him bladder relaxants irrespective okay. of whether the urodynamics is showing it is a normal compliance and then see if the creatinine is coming down if that is with good bladder relaxants like tolterodin 4 mg and uh, catheter drainage if his creatinine is coming down it means that it's the bladder which is at fault and there would probably a role of bladder relaxants in this case uh, you may be right sir but what bugs me is that the initial ultrasound showed only left hydronephrosis left sided hydrourethral nephrosis if it would be a congenital mega ureter then it should have shown hydrourethral nephrosis on both sides right at the first time not at the age of 28 fine so one possibility is that uh, the sonography uh, which was done earlier may not have you know done the proper sometime Uh, there are fallacies in ultrasonography also yes uh, so there may be one of the possibility of course we, this patient what happened was that again 
the hydronephrosis was there, which was persistent. He had an infection. We did a PCN also. We tried to, there was a stone formation. So we removed the stone by doing PCNL. And uh, then again, I took him, I did the straightening of the ureter. Now, I think that straightening of the ureter is not required. But in this case, because the hydronephrosis was there and it was not resolved, means it was increasing. So we did the straightening of the ureter also, thinking there may be secondary PUJ. So that is also done. At present, he is maintaining, in between he comes with the infection, but not a pyelonephritis. He is coming with the infection and his creatinine is maintained, I think, at 2.2. So he has undergone many surgeries. So, uh, Sharmaji, now you just tell your experience that in the different scenarios, how we, you will treat the patient. You can ask, the, ask them also. You can... Uh, I think uh, we have discussed this as a case. Uh, ideally, the PU walls that they would come... So you can now, you can forget about this case. You can ask them other questions. Yeah, sir. I think that they have been asked a lot of questions sir, over two, two hours. <laughs> but most of the time, sir, these cases which would be coming to them, even in their practice or in exams, would be infants. It wouldn't be much later in life. So you need to know what are the nadir creatinine levels for that particular age group. How long will uh, when vasicostomy is indicated, when urethrostomy is indicated, which type, what are the different types of urethrostomies, which urethrostomy would be preferred so that the bladder is not totally defunctionalized. And uh, Devash is just asked, which is the most uh, uh, dangerous type of PU also, it is the type three, three like 5% of cases. So, and then when should vasicostomy be done? What is, how it is done? What are the techniques of doing a vasicostomy? Uh, how will you fulgurate the wall once a vasicostomy is done? And then subsequently, how vasicostomy closure is done? And how will you follow up? And then despite doing everything, still the kidneys deteriorate because some of these kidneys are inherently dysplastic. You will also, uh, the examiner will also ask you about what is meant by wall bladder syndrome. What are the reasons why the ureters remain persistently dilated? Uh, one tricky question, which is sometimes asked in exams, is a child with PU wall fulguration has been done, but later on develops gastroenteritis, and the pediatrician is managing the child with the urine output, but the output is always good, but the child is severely dehydrated. Why this is so? This is because the kidneys have lost their concentrating ability, and they keep on pouring more urine. So I think most of these are covered well in Campbell. Uh, and you people uh, are very well versed with the book. You read it far better than probably we, I read. So I think these are the questions which are asked. But my advice to you would be, don't approach a case with a fixed idea. You, you see, you have seen cases from many years. You have seen patients day in and day out. You have been evaluating and presenting these to your bosses and consultants. You present these cases as you see these patients in your OPD and ward. And most of the times you are doing it very rightly. Why try to change something in exam? If you stick to a very simple way that what you are doing, you follow it, I think you will be successful in exams. Fine. Uh, so, sir, uh, this is a question. So, so that uh, you mentioned with the question about uh, what are the indications for different types of urethrostomy, sir. Could you elaborate on that? Nee, see, the indications for urethrostomy is there. If you ask the type of urethrostomy which needs to be done should be a lower loop urethrostomy so that there is some amount of urine which is coming into the yeah. uh, bladder and it is not a defunctionalized bladder. And now this again becomes controversial because there are some people who prefer urethrostomy prima facie. There are some who say ki vasicostomy is better. Now, in it, it all depends upon your uh, the practice of your unit and the way you are comfortable answering that particular question. 
see in the older books that used to mention was one of the criteria used to be that if on mco there is bilateral reflux you go for vasectomy and if there is bilateral hydrourethronephrosis but no reflux seen then you go for ureterostomy but a better way would be that if the ureters are very markedly dilated and tortuous to an extent that they are bigger than the size of your thumb in an infant and you feel that doing a vasectomy will not help in drainage of those ureters then ureterostomy is indicated especially in a sick child otherwise vasectomy is a far better proposition than doing a ureterostomy now of course i am bit more biased in doing a vasectomy so that could be one of the reasons but markedly dilated ureters where you feel that vasectomy will not help in drainage because they are so dilated that it won't they won't drain then a loop a cutaneous loop ureterostomy is indicated Uh, yeah somebody right. asked the formula weight based formula to calculate uh, creatinine ojas or mrigank any of you uh kunda there's a what do you think ah uh, one thing base created yes you know the formula uh, no sir no sir no sir okay uh sharma ji you know the no, formula no, or we no, can sir. put it I, on I, a... i don't remember it so i think it's better so somebody then we put it on a on a group uh another question can you do an integrate study to know whether vuj is obstructed see the question of vuj getting obstructed in a pu wall is very controversial previously people used to believe that there is a primary uvj obstruction but later on they found out that the primary uvj obstruction is seen in less than 5% of cases most of the times it's the bladder which is at fault which is responsible for the obstruction which comes at the uvj so you normalize the bladder and then things the uvj starts draining well Yes, any, any if the bladder is abnormal, if the bladder is trabeculated and diverticulum present, then there is no role of uh, reimplantation. Yes. Yes. In fact, it is contraindicated. You should not go ahead. Fine. Yeah. So, so yes, next yes. will be the last uh, clinic. Ojas. Yes. So okay? one last, one more last question, sir. Actually, yeah. uh, so you mentioned about vasectomy closure, sir. So, so how long do you uh, uh, continue the vasectomy and then plan for a vasectomy? Uh, vasectomy should be continued till the child stabilizes. He gains weight. Most of the time, vasectomy is done in cases uh, where the child is very sick. It is okay. you know there are there have been instances when I have done uh, vasectomy. even in a infant who is less than 5 or 7 days old under local anesthesia and it sounds difficult and uh, difficult to digest also but i have done it very often because they are in such a bad shape that to think of uh, keeping you know the infant feeding tube doesn't stay there it's very difficult to keep it there and then uh, anesthesia is also risk over there so once the child stabilizes he is fine he has gained weight he is doing well he is achieving his milestones normally then you can do a vasectomy evaluation or fulguration of the pu walls now books don't mention this but if at all in your practice you come across a case where there is a vasectomy and you want to fulgurate a wall take my word it is far easier to fulgurate a wall by going from the vasectomy using a pediatric cystoscope rather than going retrograde via the urethra you pass an infant feeding tube per urethrally it comes out in the bladder and you pass your uh, scope from the vasectomy through the bladder neck and you will see walls and that was the first time i honestly appreciated what is meant by wall you pull out the infant feeding tube everything closes you pass the infant feeding tube and you can see an absolute wall over there 
and it's very easy to fulgurate using even a resectoscope or a laser because you are not worried at the most what will happen you will take a small uh, charring effect on the infant feeding tube or a cut on the infant feeding tube makes no difference and once you fulgurate the walls what i do is i wait for some time which can be anything from 4 to 8 weeks and then reassess by doing an integrate cystoscopy and if i am pakka sure that the valve has been adequately fulgurated then i uh, close the vasectomy but that then it is again not the end of the story. do your corollary i have valve bladder and they need to be followed up by doing urodynamics at a convenient age you cannot do urodynamics at the age of 1 year or 2 years it's easier said than done it's impossible to do it most of the times very difficult and very difficult to interpret it also so one question yeah. sir antenatally if we detect the pu pu uh, posterior urethral valve sir yes and we do not have this uh, sir uh, this fetoscope or sir uh, modes to put a stent true true then sir how at the age of supposing 28 weeks how would we manage till the that's a, that's unfortunately a sad situation which you find yourself in very often in practice these uh, children you have to ask the obstetrician to look at the amount of amniotic fluid which is present and the moment the parameters don't look good they should go for a delivery very often it's a cesarean section and immediately after birth you have to confirm the diagnosis by doing a vcog under antibiotic cover keep an infant feeding tube after 48 hours look at the creatinine and then based on the creatinine decide whether you want to primarily fulgurate the valve or you want to do a vasectomy and uh, then manage him later so uh, gyanendra i yes. just to corollary to you and um, briganka uh, one of my radiologist okay he and the pediatric surgeon antenatally intrauterine they have done transuterine trans abdominal transuterine fulguration of posterior cervix oh, and yes. uh, if possible next time i will request he has shown me the whole video dr lulla and dr rasiksha so i will request him to if he can to show us uh, next time if uh, we are going ahead with uh, lecture yeah okay so i think today is the second last next time we will have the last clinic after that for two months let everyone study appear for their theory exam and before practical will come out with uh, oski and uh, other practical yes, uh, okay. is that okay yes, yes if sir. you got any comment if you got any suggestions please write down on the group okay fine so yes sir so we will ask dr sharma uh, next time if he has got multiple cases uh, we will decide regarding the last session as a pediatric urology session fine yes sir okay sharma yes sir thank you so much sir thank, thank you thank you sharma sir thank you gorang sir thank you sir mrigang thank you sir get you know if i have been bit harsh in the way i have asked questions Uh, sometimes yeah, yeah. are of that type you are very mild yes, <laughs> thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you night, thank sir. you so much sir thank good you night, sir. Sir. good night sir good night sir good night good night sir thank you sir